A barrel jack is an incredibly common type of power conductor in consumer electronics. You'll commonly see it on your wall warts, which are basically just AC to DC converters. These little things have transformers in them that step down the 120, 220 volt AC to something more usable like anywhere from a couple volts to a couple dozen volts. And they also rectify using a full bridge rectifier usually with some nice smoothing capacitors. They rectify the AC into DC so that it can go into your device. Now, barrel jacks, we're not talking about stuff like USB. That's for devices that also communicate. That's what USB is usually used for when things communicate. Now you'll also have USB chargers. A lot of things charge by USB, but that's just because it's easy. You know USB is going to be 5 volts. It's just a cable. The cables are interchangeable. Computers and phones and laptops are everywhere. So USB is becoming quite common for charging and powering things, but wall warts are still plentiful, especially when they come with devices. I have barrel jack connectors in the backs of my monitors, for instance, and the backs of my speakers as well. Well, my computer speakers. Now, it's called a power plug. You know, it's a connector for power just because that's what it's usually used for. There's only two, so that's good for carrying a single circuit, you know, one in, one out line. But it's just a pair of conductors. You can do whatever you want with it. It's going to be uncommon to use barrel jacks for a data signal, especially in the age of USB, but you can. But I'll be talking about power, of course. Now, a barrel jack, there's, of course, male and female varieties, and it's named similarly to the barrel of a gun or a cannon. The female end, if this will focus, the outside is basically a cylindrical hole, and inside the hole, there's also a largish pin, a very sturdy pin. The pin, which is usually center positive from what I've read, but it doesn't matter, you know, just as long as it agrees on one end and the other, so you don't get it backwards. But your center pin will carry one, and your shell around it is the other connector that carries the other. The male version is a thinner cylindrical shaft, and the outside connects to the outside shell, and the inside goes around the pin. The insulator in here is just air, because the pin is in the middle of the metal. And of course, they don't connect at the bottom. On the male end, there is a thin plastic little ring here that separates the shell on the outside with the inside, and they connect like that. The pin inside here goes inside here, and the outside of the shaft here connects with the outside of the shaft here. And so that's your male and female barrel jack. They are so common for multiple reasons, one of which is they'd be easy to manufacture. Anything that's molded and open-ended so you can just have a mold go down on something, that's nice and easy to make. Another reason is they're incredibly sturdy. You know, you've got nice thick metal, but it's pretty light. You've got a lot of contact surface area. It's usually carrying a power signal, which isn't sensitive to voltage variations very much. It's the voltage source in the first place. So it's resistant to noise. But also, you can even carry a data signal over this because these materials oxidize easily. They're not gold-plated or anything, but there's a lot of surface area contact. And especially if you're plugging them and unplugging them a lot, you're often scraping the oxidation off. So it works decently well. And then another reason, in fact, the one I think is most important, is the safety aspect. In both the female and male, one of the conductors is quite well buried. I mean, you can put your finger in there and get to it, but if you're just casually handling it, uh, you are incredibly unlikely to make a circuit with this at all. You're only going to be touching one conductor. Now, the human body has a lot of resistance, but it has only so much. If you're dealing with 5 volts kind of milliamp stuff, then you're not going to have any problem. You can just grab onto that, and if your hands are wet, you'll probably get hurt a little bit. Um, but higher power situations, you might have an issue, so it's quite safe. Contrast with this, you're touching both plugs all day. Now, this is perfectly safe because this is the end that goes in the wall. You're not going to touch this when it's in the wall because it's in the wall. But the barrel jack end is the end that comes out. So when you've got this in the wall, again, this is putting out lower voltage and lower amperage, so it's not really that big of an issue. But every bit of safety helps, especially with people like me around, as you may have noticed from time to time. Now, these are a couple neat little things I've gotten from SparkFun. First of all, it's a barrel jack switch. So... This is just a regular power supply that plugs into your wall, takes the AC, and converts it to DC with the barrel jack. Now, that's great and all, 
And usually your devices are going to have their own power switches, or they're not going to be devices you should be turning off anyway. So that's not a problem, but this is good for hobbyists. SparkFun is a hobbyist website. So this is good for putting into such as an Arduino. An Arduino does not have an on and off switch. It's a very simple device, but you can power it by the barrel jack and the switch is just a male to female continuer. So you take your plug into the wall, plug it in there, plug this into whatever, because you see these are the same plug. It's basically a pass-through with a switch on it. Really handy. Now, in addition to that, we also have these breakouts. Breakout in electronics, when you hear that, that's referring to something like this. So you have a device, such as a thumbstick, that is normally intended to be soldered onto a PCB and used with a printed circuit, a professional printed circuit, which this is, essentially, but it's got pins. You know, these pins that I connected wires to, let's take them off. So it essentially breaks the connections out into easy-to-access pins for hobbyist purposes. Another thing is, if you have, you know, an integrated circuit. You could put the integrated circuit in your breadboard if it's the right size, but if it's not designed for a breadboard, you can solder it onto a little mini PCB and connect its pins to bigger, more spread out pins that you can then put into a breadboard or at least connect to a breadboard. So that's what a breakout is. So here are male and female barrel jack connectors, but on the other end is two screw terminals. A screw terminal is where you put a wire in, any type of wire really, you stick it in here, and then you screw it down. See, it just comes right out, but if you screw it down, there's two little screws here, so you screw it down, and it tightens, don't over tighten, and it holds it in there so it doesn't fall out. And so now, if I do another one, in fact, let me use different wire, because this is a male to female. So let me take two male to male, and you just put it in the terminal. There's obviously no circuit right now, so it's not hurting anything. So you just just tighten the screw down until it grabs it, and so it doesn't fall out. Another one over here. You can do this on a table with clips if it's easier. Need some dexterity for this. So now it's grabbed on to both of these. You know, it's not going to hold if you yank on it, but it'll hold well enough against wiggling. So now, essentially, we can do the same with the other one. So now I've got the other end as well. So I've got two. I've got the, the male one and the female one, both with two little wires out of them. And the purpose of this, again, for example, I have this power supply plugged into this breadboard. Let's say I wanted to power an Arduino or whatever with a barrel jack with that. So I could plug this male end into the Arduino and it's labeled positive and negative. So the positive end I'm going to put into positive power, the negative into negative. I have five volts. So let's turn it up to an amp and you'll see the Arduino turns on and it's drawing 25 milliamps. Of course this is the barrel jack so it's using its voltage regulator and it actually wants more than 5 volts. It recommends 9. So there we go. 44 to 50 milliamps with an Arduino that's not really doing much is about right. I think the thing's rated for 200 some milliamps anyway. But there you go. This is one of the uses for it. Again this is for a hobbyist purpose or a prototyping purpose where you're not trying to build your final device you're trying to design the device. You're messing about seeing what works. And you can test out easily different power supplies, different whatevers. If you're using this as a data connection for whatever reason, you can do that. And that's the purpose of the breakout. But additionally, you can use it to test. So you can make sure, if you wanted, to say, I just purchased these breakouts and I want to make sure that they're actually correct. So what you can do is use your multimeter's continuity mode, or you can hook up an LED with a resistor or whatever to confirm that these wires are correct. So one end is labeled positive on the little plastic shell. So I will take the one labeled positive. Now I'll plug it into my breadboard along with one of the probes of my multimeter. Then I will use the other probe to connect and it's supposed to be center positive. So I will touch the outer shell and nothing happens. I will touch the pin inside and I get a noise. That means that it is indeed conducting positive through the center pin, according to the label. So now we know this is labeled correctly. Or if this wasn't labeled, then you could just do that test and you could say, okay, this wire connects to the center pin. Like if you had not purchased this, if you had taken a barrel jack wire and just cut it and stripped the other end and you were making your own one of these, then you could just use that to figure out which end is which. And we can test the other one, the male one, center positive means inside the shell rather than the pin because the inside shell connects to the pin. So we'll take the one labeled positive, put it in with the multimeter and touch the probe to the inside and touch it to the outside 
Nothing happens. So we've now confirmed that both of these breakouts are labeled correctly. And they're perfectly reusable because to get your wires out, you just loosen the screw terminals and your wires come back out. It's just two little pieces of metal that clamp down. And there you go. So barrel jack connectors are popular and super easy to use. And they're one of the things that it's really nice to take off of old electronics. You know, like I said, it's not worth desoldering resistors off of old things, uh, but it is worth if you have something that you're going to throw out. Uh, just take the, the power connector, cut off the wire, keep the wire, and you have a nice little barrel jack connector. Now, it's obviously going to be much easier to purchase them, and if all you're using them for is power supplies anyway, it's much easier to just purchase the power supplies. But they are pretty handy to have around, and great for any connection that you want to be pretty sturdy. You know, USB especially USB-C is pretty sturdily built, soldered onto a motherboard, but a barrel jack connector is bigger. You know, you get one of these things, you can just straight up strap this down. You know, if you want to make a, make a device that's supposed to be bounced around, and it's not supposed to be like a professional one, you're just putting it together, get you one of these, or, in fact, one you've cut off of somewhere, connect the wires together, tape them down, and then the connector itself, you can use duct tape, you can use whatever. I don't recommend super glue. We have found out that it reacts with some plastics, unless it says it on the super glue bottle that it's okay. But you could, you know, take a piece of metal and screw it into something. You can nail it in. It's nice and big and sturdy. You can secure it down and you can, you know, plug in and plug out all day for a nice rugged connection that's not going to wiggle loose over time. Just remember to check whether your inside or your outside is the positive end. Until next time, be seeing you.